Visiting the zoo in the winter is so fun, but after exploring in the cold, chilly air, I definitely need to warm up. Off to the reptile house. Here we are in the reptile house. And the first thing I notice, Brick, is that it's warm in here. Can you tell us about the reptiles we have here? This is, this is one of the other things that makes the zoo a fun place to go to in the winter. We've got a great place for you to come in and warm up. Reptiles are cold-blooded. They don't produce a body temperature, so we have to keep them warm. Go out, you walk around the zoo and it's cold, you come in here and warm up and get to see some really cool animals. That's for sure. Reptiles are snakes, lizards, turtles, and we also have some amphibians in here. So we have poison dart frogs. And our reptiles go from an 18-foot reticulated python wow. down to smaller reptiles. I noticed the largest exhibit in this room is the Komodo dragon right behind us. Just the name Komodo dragon gets me excited. Tell us about this beautiful creature you have here. Dragons have fascinated people for, throughout history. They are found in Asian culture, they're found in European culture. Um, the Komodo dragons come from a series of islands off of Indonesia, mm -hmm. and they're only found on those islands, which is what makes them so rare. Look at that tongue. So big. Yeah. They are one of the largest lizards in the world. They get to be 10 feet long, and they weigh 200 pounds. Wow. They're, they're a massive animal, and they're just fascinating. When I think of dragons, I think of fire-breathing creatures that fly down from the sky. Why do we think of dragons like that? Well, Komodo dragons don't fly, but they do have a red tongue. And some of the theory is that uh -huh. when they would flick that red tongue out there, that was where the fire-breathing legends came from. And so that's... That makes a lot of sense. All, all these legends have some sort of basis in, in something that people saw or heard at some point. Wow, the Komodo dragon is awesome. One of the other exhibits we have here is a reticulated python. She's almost 18 feet long and 135 wow. pounds. Wow. You're not going to find a snake that big in a pet store, huh? Hopefully not. Hopefully not. Why so dangerous? Well, she's a constrictor, and her teeth are a little bit over half an inch long, so when she attacks, she'll grab you, pull you in her coils, and then constrict. Wow. And, and we, constrict means? They, her, her body goes around you and stops your ribs from moving, which stops your lungs from moving. So they just you squeeze suffocate. away. Squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. Doesn't break bones, usually, but stops your lungs from moving. Wow. Scary, but cool. People either love snakes or they're terrified of them. Either way, they are fascinating creatures. Tell us a little bit about them. Yes, they are fascinating. I think that the people are afraid of snakes because they're so different than we are. They don't yeah. have arms and legs, they don't have eyelids, they don't have hair. So the legends of snakes staring you down, they don't have eyelids, they can't blink their eyes. Right. So that's different than we are. And anything that's different than we are is something that's a little bit strange or scary for us. Yeah, that's true. They don't have hands that they can use, so they have to swallow their food items whole. Reticulated pythons are also the longest species of snake in the world and have been reported up to 33 feet. Wow. So she's 18 feet, that's almost twice as big as she is right now. And the name reticulated comes from the pattern on the back. It's a web-like design, hmm. and it's good camouflage for her. She's an ambush predator. She sits and waits for a food item to come past, and then we'll reach out and grab it. She's not likely to chase something down. Right. Patience. 
So Brent, most of the exhibits we've seen here have one kind of animal in one exhibit. But behind us, we have something special. We have many different species of animals all living together in harmony. Tell us about this exhibit and what we can find here. This is our Asian forest exhibit, and that's exactly what we're trying to show. Animals don't live by themselves. So in this exhibit, we have three different species of birds, two different species of turtle, and a lizard. And that's what you could find if you were in a forest in Asia. We have a pair of white-crested laughing thrushes. We have ballymynas. Wait, say that again? White-crested laughing thrush. It's laughing thrush? Laughing thrush. Does that mean they laugh? They make a lot of noise. <laughs> sort of like a blue jay. That, that personality, that attitude. Got it. And we have crested wood partridges, and we have ballymynas. Cool. And the ballymynas are an endangered species. Huh. Now, is that a mina bird, the kind of bird that sings and talks back? Same family. Same different, family. Different species, though. Got it. These guys are all white with blue masks. Uh-huh. And then we have elongated tortoises and spiny hill turtles and a prehensile-tailed skink.